right, it's time for another one of these diary logs. These are now going to change. I plan to do one a week. Um, yeah, one a week now. That is, that is the goal. Um, yeah, and th these are going to be so much different now because now I want to talk about news and or what I qualify as news. Uh, and yeah. So, our, it is currently 12.28 p.m. on October 25th. I have just eaten lunch. It was a little TV dinner lasagna. And currently outside, it is cloudy, it is windy, and it is raining. It's not a good time. It's not a good day outside, really. Uh, inside the house... Uh, pretty cold, even though we're almost at like 20 degrees on the thermostat. So there's that. Uh, I tried to heat it up, but whatever. Oh, yeah. We just got a big burst of wind right now. That's great. So yeah, uh, let's get into it though. Let, let's, let's get in. Oh. I don't know if you could hear that, but I'll... Oh, oh, I'm scared. <laughs> Got a huge windstorm going on, man. It's, it's really chucking. Uh, let, I do want to check. What does the thing say? Um, Vancouver is raining. Canada, yes. Cloudy. That's a mild way to put it. Um, feels like one uh yeah i would say so uh definitely i would say so okay now let's get into the news the news today is all from what i have gotten from cultaholic and wrestle talk um no news for any other sources but we got some news here so apparently on saturday impact had bound for glory and a couple of debuts were scrapped from actually showing up on Battle for Glory. Uh, those were Braun Strowman, now called Titan. Uh, apparently, he they just couldn't get a contract in time for him. So his debut fell through. Uh, Jonah, the former Bronson Reed, he was supposed to debut, but they just didn't do it for some reason. I don't know why. Maybe he had issues getting there. You know, like maybe his visa didn't work out. I don't know. And Bray Wyatt, who has also been talked about coming to Impact, was not there because his non-complete, sorry, non-compete clause does not expire until, I believe, this coming Saturday. So, yeah. He can't do anything. And, yeah, that's, that sucks for Impact. I know they probably wanted some big debuts for Bound for Glory, but, well, the chips fall where they may. Uh, Jim Ross tweeted... Uh, that he has been diagnosed with skin cancer. So all the best to Jim Ross, man. Hope you get better. He was still at Dynamite, even though he got diagnosed with skin cancer. He's powering through it. Maybe take some time off, Jim, if you need it. Uh, but all the best. And Charlotte Flair has huge heat backstage. Uh, to the point where some people are saying, like, Charlotte is a completely different person. She's paranoid. She's going to lose her top spot. All this type of stuff. So, yeah, that those are the big news coming out on this episode. So there's that. That's that's the news for this episode. Next episode, we'll have more news. Will it have more trees rattling and windstorms? I don't know, but I am very much distracted by the wind. Storms going on. Uh oh. Uh, so this weekend was a uh, was quite an event. Um, on Friday, 
I watched the Injustice movie, the adaption, the animated adaption of Injustice. And I was like, okay, how are they going to do this? This is going to be like a, a multi-movie thing. Each movie is a year, right? No, not so. So, the movie starts off relatively well, follows the comic pretty well, except for the fact that they kill Flash for no apparent reason. He's just murdered. Obviously, Flash plays a big role in the Injustice universe, so I was very confuddled. Um, so, the movie, the Injustice movie, it had some stuff there where I'm like, this is very well done. This was very much like the comic come to life, you know? And I, that made me happy. That's what I wanted. But then there's some mind-boggling decisions there where I'm like, what were you thinking? And it was very much apparent that this was just trying to tell the basic Injustice story, condensing it in like a two-month span and one just solo movie. And that's not what they should have done. They should have... If you're going to do an Injustice movie, you need more than one movie to tell it in, first off. Uh, a lot of key characters were omitted because of this, like them trying to scrunch it all in. Uh, Black Canary was not there. Green Lantern missed out on a big chunk of this movie. Same with Shazam and Aquaman. Um, they were just kind of tossed to the side for some reason. The Windstorm, bro, calm down. Uh, they were just kind of tossed to the side for no reason. Uh, people like, uh, Huntress, she got nothing. She was like in the background and then never saw her again. What? Uh, Mr. Terrific pretty much took over Flash's role in the movie for some reason. The, the big chess scene from the Justice comics that Superman and Flash have, that's now Mr. Terrific. <laughs> okay. Uh, Ra's al Ghul pretty much became an amalgamation of Sinestro and Lex Luthor. Uh, their characters from the comic. It, it was just a big jumbled mess at the end of the day. Um, yeah, Nightwing's death happened a bit different. Instead of him getting hit by, da by the rod from Damien and then tripping on the rock and falling down, the rod just kills him instantly. Which, okay, you know, whatever. It is a metal freaking rod. I'll let that slide. Um. So, yeah. I uh, Overall, I really... And this is coming from an Injustice fan, so I'm expecting more. Like, if someone watched this movie like my dad did, not knowing anything about Injustice, he thought it was a solid movie. Up until the end, where they just try to rush to cram in the whole, Oh, we brought an alternate universe Superman over, and he's gonna come in and fight our evil Superman. And, well, that's not gonna work, and instead we're gonna have an alternate universe pregnant Lois Lane come over, and then she's gonna tell him, Oh, you're not my Clark, and that's it. And then suddenly Superman realized, oh, he did a bad thing, one woman's gonna turn good on for no reason, and there we go, we're done. Batman kisses the girl and fade black. No, that's not. That's not. No. <laughs> that is not. No. What happens? Um. But like to someone like my dad again, who never saw it, knows nothing about injustice. To them, this would come off as a good, probably solid movie. To someone like me, big injustice fan. Who I'm expecting an adaptation. It did not come off as good. It came off as a jarbled mess. Where they pick and chose what they were going to do. So I give the Injustice movie. A 4 out of 10. It It's a jarbled mess. At the end of the day. Um, Yeah. It's that movie. I will never watch it again. <laughs> I can tell you that. I can tell you that part. Uh, just popped up here, a little bit of a break, just popped up here, uh, WWE has announced their calendar year for next year, 2022. 
Uh, it says that WWE has announced uh, dates for their 2022 pay-per-view calendar. Dates will soon be released for February and October, which are not on here. And because the October and February dates are not on this list. And they said those are most likely the Saudi Arabia shows. Uh, so, yeah. We have, here's, here's the pay-per-view. We have Saturday, January 1st will be WWE Day 1, which we knew. They are canceling TLC this year in December. No pay-per-view in December. Instead, they're going to have two in January. One of them will be January 1st, Day 1. Then we have Saturday, January 29th will be Royal Rumble. Royal Rumble on a Saturday? Sounds awesome. I know my dad's gonna be awesome, gonna be so happy because he can actually freaking drink and get drunk for a bit, get a bit buzzed at the Royal Rumble. Uh, then we have no February day. Obviously, that's probably gonna be a Saudi show. Uh, then we have Saturday, April second, and Sunday, April third, will be WrestleMania thirty eight. So WrestleMania is still gonna be a two night event. That's cool. I like WrestleMania being a two night event. So yeah, WrestleMania is still gonna be two nights. Uh, and then we have, for May, there's going to be a show on May, Sunday, May 8th, uh, in Providence, Rhode Island. No idea, that could be probably Money in the Bank. Uh, Sunday, June 5th, will be a pay-per-view in the Allstate Arena in Chicago. Uh, on Saturday, July 2nd. Mo oh, no, it says here, Money in the Bank is Saturday, July 2nd. What? There's two pay-per-views in July. There's no pay-per-view in August. There is no pay-per-view in August next year. Okay, what? Saturday, July 2nd, Money in the Bank at the Allegiant Stadium in Las Vegas. Okay. And then Saturday, July 30th, SummerSlam at the Nissan Stadium in Nashville, Tennessee. So no pay-per-view in August. Saturday, September 3rd, or Sunday, September 4th, will be the will be a pay-per-view. And then Saturday, November 26th, is Survivor Series at the TD Garden in Boston. So the October pay-per-view most likely will be the Saudi show. And a February pay-per-view most likely will they'll slot in a Saudi show there. No pay-per-view in August. And two in July. That is a bold, bold move. They are also... Picking a lot of Saturdays, which I'm, I mean, AEW kills it on Saturday pay-per-views because you can just do whatever the hell you want. I mean, no one's got any work on Sunday. Pick a Saturday, which is great. Full gear is going to be a Saturday. It's awesome. Uh, yeah. All right, then. that's a quite an odd pay-per-view schedule. <laughs> Guess we'll go with that. Uh, and then we have the next thing I want to talk about, which is I, on Friday, I watched Injustice, and I didn't like it, and then the next day, on Saturday, I watched Dune, Dune came out, and I went to go watch Dune with my father and grandfather, and I gotta say, wasn't a huge fan of it, either. In two days, I watched two movies I was not a huge fan of. Uh, Dune. It was very slow. Um, this was part one. There's gonna be a second movie. So, okay. This is just part one setup. Uh, but even knowing that, because I knew that going into the movie, I was spoiled on that, that this is just part one. I was like, there were so many times in this movie where I'm like, okay, that's it then, right? We're done. You could end the movie here. And they didn't, and I was like, Ugh. When it gets to a point in a movie where I'm like, how much time's left? That's not a good sign. <laughs> um, but all the actors were fa I mean, all the actors are fan freaking fantastic, dude. Uh, and there are, there, there's some interesting stuff in here. I'm not gonna act like I was completely bored out of my mind the whole movie. I wasn't. There was some interesting stuff in there. All the visual effects were great. You genuinely felt like you were off on diff these different planets. Uh, the plot of, like, the Emperor sees the Atreides family as a threat, so he sent them, he sent them to this planet to basically die. Is interesting, and I'm intrigued to see how Paul's gonna live with his mom, and, 
his mom's pregnant and they're living with the the sand people and all that i'm i am intrigued to see how that does in dune 2 i will say the end the near the end the last like part of the movie when um the Atreides family is attacked at night. That's when the movie really picks up. But before that, it is just pretty boring. Uh, yeah. And Dune gets quite screwed up. Because I'm on a Wikipedia after. And Dune gets quite screwed up. So I'm, I'm intrigued to see how they're going to adapt that to modern age. Where people get easily offended. Some of the stuff in there is like, can I really do that on cinema? <laughs> Uh, yeah. Overall, I think Dune Part 1 had promise. It was intriguing in places, and then it was boring in some. Uh, but, yeah. I, if I had to give it a rating out of 10, I'd give it a 6. There was definitely intriguing stuff there, and there's great, like, ideas f to develop upon for, like, a future movie. But for what we got, it was just kind of, eh. I will, I'm definitely not going to watch it again. I'm definitely not watching part this this movie ever again. So in two days, I watched two movies I wasn't a fan of. That sucks. <laughs> that that just sucks. Uh, but something that did happen uh, during this past week was I am slowly getting back into Doctor Who again. Uh, this probably came with the news that Russell T. Davis is coming back. But I'm slowly getting back into the Doctor Who fandom again. I'm starting to rewatch um, Doctor Who YouTubers that I stopped watching when I took my big sabbatical for Doctor Who. Uh, I started to watch them again. You know, Pertwee Smith Eleven. I listened to an episode of the Celestial Podcast again. Uh, watched Lore Slars videos on the writer overviews. I'm start. I've listened to the Big Finish Fan podcast from Pertwee Smith Eleven. All those ones got caught up on it. Yeah, I'm starting to get back into into Doctor Who again. I think, and I think I'm gonna start to start my marathon again. My marathon has been on pause because I'm in Big Finish land at this point. Now it all just depends on Big Finish with the Fourth Doctor. So that's why my marathon's kind of halted. But yeah, I'd love to start my marathon again. I think is what I'm gonna do. So yeah, I I'm get I'm slowly getting back into Doctor Who. I'm not fully back in, but I'm slowly but surely getting back into Doctor Who. Uh, I think I'm gonna start watching some Sam Davis again, and then I'll be fully into it. Uh, and I yeah I I guess that's really it. That's that's all that's really going on. I went on Audible the other day. Actually, to end this, I went on Audible the other day audiobook for sword art book two is out and i quickly use my credit on it so book one I, I didn't i never finished the audiobook for book one i just checked and i'm like i still have like an hour left i'm like what i thought i finished this but i didn't so i'm gonna quickly listen to the, to the audiobook for book one and then i can listen to the audiobook for book two which i am ready for let's go i have book two book two will be the first book i actually have own that we get an audiobook so i'm i'm excited i am i'm excited let's go okay and that does it that that really does it for this one uh i don't really know how long these will go now i tried before to make them like an hour or like 50 minutes or something now it's just going until i want really uh that this is all i have right now um as of what's coming up this week uh NXT Halloween Havoc is tomorrow, so that should be intriguing. Uh, I definitely want to watch some Halloween Havoc on the network to get into the Halloween mood, because I'm not in the Halloween mood. There's been like zero Halloween TV ads at all, so I'm not in the Halloween mood at all, like I normally would be. Um, yeah, uh, going to start watching some Halloween Havocs. NXT Halloween Havoc is tomorrow. Tonight is Elevation. So we'll be watching that. Tomorrow is also AEW Dark. Gonna also watch some AEW Dark. Of course, Dynamite on Wednesday. Uh, MLW Fusion is also on Wednesday. Uh, Thursday, NXT UK. And Friday is... This is Rampage! So, yeah. Just a normal week. Just a normal week. Um, 
also going to start trying to watch Pie in the Sky again, get back into that. Uh, David Tennant's got a Around the World in 80 Days adaptation that I want to watch as well when that comes out. So lots of stuff going on, I guess. And in, uh, Young Justice Season 4 is out now. Uh, so I'm just waiting for them to put that on Teletoon here in Canada. So yeah, bunch of stuff to watch now, which I'm happy about. Alright, yeah, that's, that's all I got right now. 